Hey everybody, Carl here. Welcome to the first episode of Trails in the Sky, the very first game in the Trail series and the beginning of the Liberal Arc. We are about to embark on an adventure that I've wanted to share with the world for years now. This is my narrated all achievements playthrough of Trails in the Skies, first chapter. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the Trail series, I've made an introductory video that explains the basic gist, linked below if you are curious. What I can say to summarize that video and set the stage properly, Trails is a JRPG series infamous for its deep story, banger music and engaging characters. And this channel is my tribute to Trails. The first games have no voice acting, so I will supply it myself as a humble amateur. Now. Let's dive right in and get every achievement as we explore the land of Liberl with Estelle and Joshua. Okay, we're on the main menu. I just wanted to start out on some fancy cinematics to get you as pumped as I am. Now, we're going to be starting a new game, and when we do, it asks us to choose a difficulty. In this game, there is no extra content or achievements tied to difficulty. In fact, difficulty in the original trilogy is kind of an afterthought and not very well balanced. So for the sake of the pacing, and because it gives us no extra completion, I'm going to stick with normal difficulty. Now, let's find out where the entire Trail series begins. In a humble abode with a young girl named Estelle. Hmm... Daddy's really late. I even got a message from the guild saying he'd be home today, too. And Shara's gone traveling around the kingdom on some kind of training. I'm so bored. Maybe I'll just practice with my staff a bit more before dinner. Hey, I'm home. Sorry to have kept you waiting, Estelle. Did you take good care of the house while I was away? Uh, of course I did. Did you run into any trouble, Daddy? You didn't get hurt fighting the bad monsters, did you? Nope. I'm as fit as a fiddle. That reminds me, though. I brought you a present. Really? What kind of present? A new fishing pole? Sneakers? Something for my training? Uh, maybe I raised you wrong, Estelle. Aren't little girls supposed to like clothes and jewelry? I like pretty clothes, but they just get dirty. And jewelry breaks when you go play outside with it on. Anyway, Daddy, what's with the big blanket? Is that my present? Oh, you're a sharp one. Now, why don't you come have a look? Uh... What? Uh... Well, here you are. Quite a handsome boy, don't you think? What? 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 Why is my present a boy? Don't make such a fuss, or you'll wake him up. Wake him up? You mean he's still alive? Looks kind of dead if you ask me. I've treated his wounds, so he should be in stable condition. In the meantime, however, we'll need to let him rest. I'll put him to bed, so if you wouldn't mind heating a kettle of water on the stove, I'd appreciate it. Okay. The mysterious boy, huh? He sure sleeps soundly, and he almost looks the same age as me. This is the first time I've ever seen black hair like that, too. He certainly does have a nice head of dark hair, and a pair of amber eyes to go with it. Hmm. That's nice and all, but how about you come clean and fess up? Uh, fess up? Yeah, who is this kid anyway? And why is he hurt? Why did you bring him to our house? Is he an illegitimate child or something? Did you betray mommy? Where have you been picking up these kinds of words? No doubt from Gerizard, I assume. Yep, that's right. <sighs> For heaven's sake. That girl is going to get me into trouble one of these days with all her nonsense. 
Actually, I just met this boy while I was out on business. And I don't even know his name. You mean brazier business? Something like that. Oh, look. Huh? He's waking up. Uh, wow. His eyes really are the color of amber. Uh, wh wh where am I? So you're awake now, are you? Welcome to my humble home. It'll be safe here, so please, just try to rest. Wh what are you trying to pull? Huh? You must be out of your mind. Why... Why didn't you just leave me there to die? Why? Well, that's a question I don't know how to answer. Does things just worked out that way work for you? Don't toy with me, Cassius Bright. Do you have any idea what you're getting yourself involved in? Hey! <laughs> you're sure shouting a lot for someone who's supposed to be hurt. Running your mouth like that is going to make it take longer for your body to heal. Uh, and just who are you supposed to be? I'm Estelle. Estelle Bright. She's my daughter. Don't you remember me telling you that I have a daughter your age? Now that you mention it... Wait a minute. Don't try and change the sub... Ow! Quit yelling! All right, all right already. Uh, but you jumping on me like that isn't going to make me heal any faster either. I don't hear you yelling again, do I? Look, jumping on me like that is just going to make things worse. Do I hear yelling? Uh, never mind. Just forget it. As a word of advice, it would be wise not to argue with Estelle while you're in this house. Even I wouldn't stand a chance if I made her mad enough. Yeah, I can see that. By the way, aren't you forgetting something? Huh? Your name! You know, that thing that people call you? I told you mine already, so don't you think it would be unfair and impolite not to tell me yours? Um... Uh-uh. It seems like the logical thing to do, if you ask me. Trying to hide it now would only serve to your detriment. Uh... uh f fine. My name is... And we will find out... After the cinematic opening. Enjoy.
How can you not be super hyped after an intro like that? All right, it's time for us to skip ahead in time. I think about five years have passed now, and Estelle and the unnamed boy are grown up, ready to go on their own adventure. And Dad's in the kitchen making breakfast. All right. And Estelle's waking up. Uh, it's so bright in here. Uh, mm, I slept like a rock. Hmm, that must mean it's Dad's turn to cook this morning. I wonder if that means Josh was still in bed. Oh, name reveal. Oh, harmonica reveal. Guess that's a no. Well, I guess I'd better get myself ready then, too. Oh, this game is just so charming. Look at this house. Look at the little pond we got. Look at the graphics. Honestly, I am all about this style. Oh, it's honestly so charming. I mean, your playing's good, too, Joshua. Bravo. Nice, Joshua! Bravo! Hey, my words exactly. Oh, Joshua, what kind of voice should... I don't know, you'll have to have like a male voice that's not my default voice, so I guess you can be a bit more like... Good morning, Estelle. I hope I didn't wake you. Nah, I was already up when I heard you start to play. I can't believe how awake you are, though. Even the roosters still have bags under their eyes. Not that I mind. What, with that siren song of yours gently lulling this beautiful woman from her slumber? What do you mean, woman? We're the same age, and I'm hardly a man. How wrong you are, Joshua. We may be the same age, but I am clearly THE woman of the house. And that makes you something like my loyal follower, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah. How fortunate for you. You could at least try and sound a tiny bit sincere. It really is a nice tune, though. Cheerful, yet somehow wistful. I like your other songs, too, of course. This one's my favorite. Uh, what's it called again? The Whereabouts of Light. <gasps> That's right! The Whereabouts of Light. I wish I could play the harmonica like you, Joshua. Sadly, it's a lot harder than it looks. Compared to what it takes to use a staff, I think the harmonica is much easier. It's really just a matter of concentration. <laughs> You're probably right. I guess my problem is just that if I don't do something that uses my whole body, I start to feel drowsy. Okay, playing harmonica is fine and all, but how about getting some exercise too? All your hobbies are sitting around kind of stuff, like reading and music. No girl is going to be impressed with just that. Well, excuse me for being so unpopular with the ladies. Although, I feel like I should be the one lecturing you about your hobbies. I mean, what kind of boy wants a girl who loves fishing, collecting bugs, and has a fetish for sports shoes? Uh, that's enough talk about hobbies for now. And for your information, I graduated from bug collecting a long time ago. Really? I'll believe that when I stop finding beetles in the hallway. Hey, Estelle. Joshua. Morning, Dad. Good morning, Dad. Is breakfast ready? It's ready and waiting. Why don't the both of you hurry on down before it gets cold? Okay. I'm on my way. Ah, yes, PNGs of an empty plate. My favorite food. Thanks for the grub, Dad. Boy, am I stuffed. Are you eating or inhaling, Estelle? Hmm. Like people say, kids who eat and sleep a lot grow a lot. Well, make sure you get enough to eat. Don't forget to pour that energy into your work, too. That reminds me, you two are finishing up your training at the guild today, aren't you? That's right. It'll be a review of everything we've learned up to this point. And once we're finished, we'll be bracers just like you, Dad. 
That means I'm not going to let you treat me like a kid anymore either. You still lack understanding, Estelle. You can only become a junior bracer in the beginning, or in other words, a trainee. If you want to be treated like an adult, then you should work extra hard in your training to become a full-fledged bracer. Well, I'm not afraid of a little hard work. Just you watch and see what I'm capable of, Dad. I'll be so successful that it won't be long before I pass you too. That's the spirit. Let's see what you're made of then, shall we? Let's not start a rivalry here, you two. And Estelle, keep your focus on the task at hand. We have a test later on today, remember? Uh, huh? Uh, wait, what test? Please tell me you didn't forget about the test, Estelle. You know, the one that checks whether or not we've mastered the skills we've been learning and training. Don't you remember Shara saying that if we failed, we'd be stuck with a ton of extra homework? Crap. Oh, totally forgot. Now that you mention it, I guess I kind of remember her saying something like that. Don't sweat it. I'm sure we'll manage somehow or other. I honestly don't know how you survived this long, Estelle. Your brain's like a sieve. Papa is sad. How could any child of mine end up with such a careless, over-optimistic personality? Ha! You're the one that raised me, so I definitely got it from you. I swear, the two of you act so much alike. Well, whatever. You should probably head over to the guild soon, Estelle. Shara's gonna be waiting there for us. Sounds like a plan. You know how crazy scary she gets when someone keeps her waiting. Let the quest begin. Oh, before I forget, it's my turn to cook dinner tonight. Is there anything in particular you'd like to eat, Dad? Any requests? Hmm, something I'd like to eat, huh? Huh. How about ruin-style scalloped fish in a balsamic vinegar sauce? What's that? I think that's a little more than Estelle's cooking skills can handle. Or our stomachs. You're right. I just wanted to see what kind of reaction I could get. I'll just have the usual fried fish and omelette. No need for anything fancy, but do try to make something edible. How rude. But I can't actually say he's wrong. Actually, I do have one favor to ask before you head out. I'd like you to pick me up a copy of the liberal news from the general goods store. They're supposed to be getting the latest edition in today. Got it. One copy of the liberal news from the general goods store. Oh yeah, Mira, Mira, Mira. So Mira is the in-game currency that we will be using throughout the game, and now we got our first little slump of it. If there's any money left over, you can have it as your allowance. However, that means no wasteful spending. All right, thanks, Dad. Okay, we're heading out now. See you later, Dad. Work hard. And give Sherazard my regards. Oh, Dad is so cool. <gasps> Are we gameplay mode? We're in gameplay mode. Oh, I forget how fast they move. All right, here we are. Welcome to the world of trails. Uh, we are moving about the environment, and pretty much the first thing we're gonna have to learn is like how to interact with things, and particularly people, because people got things to say. And in this game, the NPCs they're like the the, the, the bread and butter, really. There's a whole game in itself just going around talking with the different NPCs, so let's talk to good old Dad. By the way, Dad, is it going to be alright if you stay at home like this instead of going to the guild today? You haven't been there for a couple of days now. Unfortunately, I have a lot of paperwork to sort out. But don't you worry, I'm carrying a big enough workload that the guild's not likely to fire me anytime soon. That's not exactly the most convincing thing I've heard come out of your mouth. All right, Dad, you sure? We can usually go back and talk to someone again for a different response or a summarized response of what they said, which is sometimes worth doing. How about yourself? Shouldn't you be getting over to the guilds? Sherazard is waiting, right? You are right. We'll go there and meet this famous Sherazard. Not to be confused with the Pokemon, of course. But first, let's stop by Dad's office. This is where things happen. And, uh, there's several bottles of alcohol. It's not good. 
But, let's go upstairs, have a look at our own rooms. So, beds can be used to rest. Resting will recover our HP and EP, as you might imagine. But we're feeling fine and fresh. Also, can we take a moment to appreciate Estelle's <laughs> collection of shoes? Like, it's even a point of bringing it up in conversation. That's just, like, the best traits. Let's check out Joshua's room. It's a bit more tidy. Uh, we can also sleep in his bed, which... Don't know how I feel about that. Then again, we're not related by blood. Uh, he's only lived with me for five years. So, things can happen. <laughs> and, of course, beautiful sights all around. Alright, let's go downstairs. Let's head outside. Let's explore around our property a little bit. Like this freaking pond in the back here. Oh, it's just beautiful. This, I feel like I want this to be the type of playthrough where we just stop sometimes. We just rotate the camera, we admire the scenery, and we listen to that banger soundtrack. The soundtrack is really what made me want to pick up and play this series on YouTube for this, for this channel. We also have some different standing logs here that Estelle uses for staff practice. That's her way of fighting baddies. I think what we should do before we head out on the road is talk about the menus. Because that's always very thrilling. If we head over to status, we can see Estelle Bright and Joshua Bright. We can also see over on the right hand side that we have their basic stats and their parameters. We can also see some equipment. Now, if we go to the equip tab, who would have guessed? We can go in and assign different weapons to our characters, which are going to have different effects, of course. Also very important to wear certain pairs of shoes, because they are the best. Going one more over, we're gonna go to the Orbment. Now, this is how we perform... I suppose you could call it magic. The Orbal Arts, which power basically everything in this society. And I believe next episode, when we begin proper bracer training, is going to be all about the Orbments. I won't touch on it too much right now. We only really have one item, and that's the map of the Liberal Kingdom. So let's take a look. This is Liberal. It's a rather small nation between giants like the Republic of Calvard and the Erebonian Empire. We can see several cities on the map here. And these are the different series we'll be traveling through. We have Bos. I believe that's how it's said. I've always read these names and never said them. We have Ruan, Saiz, and then Gransel, which is the capital city. And of course, we are right by Roland. The humble starting village, you could say. We also have a tactic section where we can decide where we want to position our players in the party or on the field of battle. So certain characters you might want up front to take aggression, others might want to start in the back. But of course we can't move during combat, so it's not the end of the world. Options menu, that's usually a little interesting. We have the minimap. Uh, the minimap has a couple of settings, which I think are worth just pointing on. You can see the minimap in the top right, and as you can see when I turn this camera, that remains static. The other option here is rotate, which means that as I rotate the camera, that rotates too. And that can help you navigate a bit. I don't have a big preference, but I think I'll just keep it set at fixed north. It's just one less element on the screen that's going to move around. I think with that, Estelle and Joshua heading out. We've gotten our first quest. We're going along the Elise Highway to the city of Roland. Now, there are no monsters on the road just yet. They've not been unleashed, and this is a fairly safe highway either way. We still have some tutorials ahead of us if we wish to properly explore the world. As we can see, we can go north to Roland or south to reach the Garuna Gate, which leads over to Gransel. Now, they have their own measuring like system in the game. I believe you call it Selge? Is that how you say it? Oh, we can go to the Bright family home. Such a peaceful little place. Bringing up the local map, we can also get a better overview and understanding of the different exits the map has. I'm fairly sure if I try to go down here to the Garuna Gate that Josh was gonna say something. Yep. Estelle, Roland City's in the opposite direction. You're not sleepwalking again, are you? How about you just be quiet and keep your comments to yourself? <laughs> I've honestly not seen that interaction before, that's pretty great. There's just so much character in them. I love them. I, I think Estelle is amazing. And I, I wish I wish our two protagonists the best of luck in this little endeavor. Let's head to Roland, everyone. 
starting city vibes. We got kids playing, people working, and shops aplenty. It looks like we made good time. Not too early or too late either. We just barely graduated from Sunday school. I never dreamed we'd have to study so hard to become bracers. Well, you're in luck. Today's our last day of training. Truth be told, though, you're the one who signed up to be a bracer in the first place. So I don't know why you'd expect to get away with any less effort. Oh, yeah, I guess I did. All right, then. Let's get to it and make it through this last hazing from Shara. You look ready to me. Let's go meet with Shara at the Bracer Guild over there, then. That sounds more like a suggestion. And I don't much like your suggestion. I want to explore the town. Here's another interesting aspect of the Trail series. As I mentioned, the NPCs are quite important because... Let's say I go ahead... Where are the kids? I can have a conversation now with the kids. But if I advance in the story, like by going to the guilds, the kids are gonna go do something else. And then I can't have this interaction with the kids. So... Let's have a talk with this guy named... Oh! Alright. It's going very fast. I'm the one who discovered it. I'm the one who discovered it, he says. And then Pat says... Take me with you! I'm the one who told you about the place to begin with! Alright. Secrets, huh? I'll come back to play later. Uh, firstly, we have the... Clock Tower here in town, which is like the... Iconic... Luke, do you mind? Oh, this is... Oh, boy. This is the iconic clock tower liberal raced in the year 1075 of the Septian calendar, erected in partnership with the liberal royal family, Septian church, and Roland city. Septian calendar, 1192. Destroyed during the Hundred Days' War when Roland was bombarded by the Erebonian imperial army. Septian calendar, 1197. Rebuilt with the cooperation of the citizens of Roland. Aw, that's nice. That's nice. Now, we have the guild right here. We're gonna wait a little bit, and instead we're gonna check out some of the other shops. Let's go to Elgar. How are you, my man? I think most, like, common NPCs are gonna get what you would call a default voice. I am by no means a voice actor. One of the greatest uh, pitfalls of mine, or the greatest flaws, is that I struggle to keep voices consistent. So if I can focus on a small cast, that's much better. So if I give Elgar, like, a special voice, I'll have forgotten that voice in three episodes' time. So, top of the morning to you, kids. Good morning, Mr. Elgar. Good morning, sir. Well, you're up rather early, aren't you? Correct me if I'm wrong, but today is your last day of training, isn't it? I seem to remember you saying something about it the last time I had you run the store. Yes, that's right. I see. Well, I'm sure you'll do just fine, Joshua. Now, Estelle, on the other hand... I've got good reason to worry. She's always been a bit scatterbrained ever since she was a child. Probably all the knocks she took to the head playing with the boys. Really? So I guess that scatterbrained trait isn't something new, huh? I'll give you a head injury if you don't shut up. And don't call me scatterbrains. Okay, you two. Let's not fight now. And should you be getting over to the guilds? There we go. If we hadn't talked to Elgar now, we would have missed out on this essential piece of Estelle lore, okay? She was in heads. She was in heads? She was indeed hit in the head as a child. Maybe I was hit in the head as a child. That would explain a lot. Hey, can we talk again? Seems like just yesterday that Estelle was clinging all over Cassius, and now she's a brazer. It looks like I'm getting old. Aw, that's nice. They've seen us grow up. How are you? Good morning, Stella. Oh my, well, if it isn't Estelle and Joshua, are you on your way to bracer training? Yeah, and just you watch. I'm gonna pass this exam and be as good of a bracer as Shara, too. Oh, you're darn right you are. I have faith in you. By the way, Estelle. Oh, what? Why are you looking at me like that? Did you wash your face? How about your teeth? Did you brush them, too? Joshua's so fastidious, but you always forget to take care of yourself. <laughs> C come on, that was a long time ago. I don't do that anymore, right, Joshua? Um, now that you mention it, you did take off from home the other day with your hair all in a mess, right? Uh, that 
that was only because it was an emergency. Mr. Rhinon got the newest Strega brand sneakers in on that day. Estelle. I yes. You listen to me carefully. For a girl your age, you need to take care of these things. If your appearance is messy, you won't look like someone that people can trust, even if you are a bracer. Your appearance is a reflection of what is on the inside. All right, I'll be more careful from now on. Well, that's that. Now, how about the both of you get on over to the guild? Man, you just can't argue with her. Aw, it's kinda nice. It's almost like she's been a bit of a motherly figure in our lives. Like, through that one in basically inconsequential dialogue with a, an NPC hidden away, we learned so much about Estelle and like about her situation and the fact that she loves sports shoes. If your parents is messy, you won't look like someone that people can trust, even if you are a bracer. Your parents are a reflection of what is on the inside. I agree. Very true. That's why, as I'm recording this, I'm sitting in my pajamas. Just my pajamas. Because it's warm in my room. And that's the reflection of who I am. A hot boy? I don't know. I don't know where we're going with that. Let's go to Rhinon General Goods. This is where we gotta get the newspaper. Good morning, Mr. Rhinon. Hello there, Estelle and Joshua. You're up rather early today. Did you come to buy a new pair of shoes? Now that you mention it, are there any new ones in stock? You know, like, the newest Stregas? Unbelievable. You've actually already forgotten why we came in here to begin with. We're not here to shop. We're supposed to be buying a copy of Liberal News for Dad, right? Uh, <laughs> of course! Aha. Uh -huh. You've always been a big collector of those shoes, haven't you, Estelle? I'm afraid that the new Stregas aren't out yet. If you're after the latest issue of Liberal News, though, I should have them in around noon. Noon, huh? That's right in the middle of our training at the Guildhouse. We'll stop by again after our training is over. Sure, I'll be waiting for you. Nice. Let's snoop upstairs. What you got? You got a wife? You got a mother? Someone I can talk to? Bloom. The morning air is so crisp and fresh. Let's see, it's about time I water my lovely flowers. Ah, You do that, Bloom. You, you were made for it. Your name, it just oozes flower person. Oh, look at that, there's even flowers out here. But, we can't do any awesome parkour and get down. We gotta go through the shop like a regular person would. We gotta keep up appearances now that we're gonna become a bracer, you know? Let's go to Melder's. Hello, Freddy. Hey, if it isn't Joshua and Estelle, how are those orbmans working out for you that we tuned the other time you were here? In your case, Estelle, it's not whether the orbment is good or bad. The problem lies in the way you use it. You're always jumping into things without a second thought, so you end up being slow to learn. If you just start thinking before you start swinging, then you'd learn twice as much. Well, excuse me for sucking! There, there. No need to get upset. Everyone has these problems when they first start out. If you can get the hang of things, you'll gradually be able to handle them better. That's right! I'm going to master using this as quick as I can and surpass even Joshua. <laughs> He's just so nonchalant. Joshua's like, nah, I'm not worried in the slightest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. When I first entered the size central factory, I pretty much couldn't use one of these things either. Even you couldn't use one, Freddy? Yeah, uh, but I can still become an engineer even if I can't use one. But since you're aiming to become a bracer, you'll have to learn how. Ugh. You really do have to learn, Estelle. This is going to be a learning journey for all of us. We're all going to grow as people, learn something new. But especially you. You've got a lot of learning to do. Let's talk. Everyone has a bit of trouble getting the hang of battle orbments from the start. If you can get the hang of things, eventually you'll be able to handle them better, Estelle. Alright, we can't really do any deals here yet. We'll be back here later to learn about how things work, but... It doesn't hurt striking up a chat with old man Melders, you know? Hey, I'm still setting up shop. Ah, Estelle and Joshua. You seem to be here rather early. Good morning, Mr. Melders. Good morning, sir. We appreciate you fixing that orbment light the other day. Speaking of orbment lights, isn't the one outside our house burned out? We should get that replaced ASAP. Orbments sure are a daily life necessity, aren't they? 
when I was a lad, there weren't any of these orb men thingies. Now we can get fire and light with a mere flip of a switch, and even ships fly in the skies. I don't like it. Don't you kids think things are way too convenient these days? Oh crap, there he goes again about the old days. Ah uh, yeah, well if you just learn to shut your big trap. When I was young, I made things a reality through hard work and sweat. Swept, I tell ya! It would be nice if the young kids these days knew the meaning of the phrase, hard work. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're probably right. Uh, let's go! How about, hold on. Orbments are convenient, all right, but I get worried that young kids don't understand what it means to work hard. You hear me, Estelle, Joshua? Don't forget what it means to stand on your own two feet. So usually the parting phrase is like a summary of what they said, but they got some other tidbits in there. All right. Those are the shops around here. Check that. What are you up to? Fremont. I'm just on my way over to the forest of Mistwell to the south of here for work. There was a merchant from Bose who came by here to buy lumber. I need to get enough ready for the order I received. Ah, there's a merchant from Bose in town. That's pretty cool. All right. Let's begin checking out some back streets. Who are you? The weather is so wonderful and revitalizing today. I have this strange feeling that something good is going to happen. I think it's the start of something magical, Ellie. Start of a new journey. Hello? Also, in true, like, RPG fashion, we're just gonna barge into people's homes. Who cares? <laughs> well, look what the cat dragged in. Estelle and Joshua, how have you been? Good morning, Mr. Fates. That's a great last name, by the way. Good morning, sir. How's your father, Cassius? Is he doing well? Yep, he's doing so well, it might even surprise you. I don't think there's anyone else his age who's in such good shape. Ha! <laughs> Is that so? My daughter's really wanted to see him, but he hasn't shown his face around here in a while. Could you give him a message for me? Tell him that fate says he'd like to talk about the old days sometimes. Sure, we'll tell him. Hey, Joshua. How does Mr. Fate know Dad so well again? I know they're friends and all, but... I've heard they were battle buddies during their days in the Royal Army. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's nice. Gives a little tidbit on Dad's. Please tell your father to stop by again sometime. We'd like to talk with him about the good old days. Indeed, my good sir. I think this is the back door to Melder's. So instead, we're going to stop by here. Who lives here? Well, we do now. Hello. Eurydice? Let's see here. It looks like my husband's gone to work. I'd better do the housework quickly and head out to take care of the shopping. Ah, yes. I better do traditional gender roles. Hello. Radford. Farming, mining, and timber. Those are the three major industries here in Roland. It's no exaggeration to say that these industries are what support Roland economically. The timber industry, which grows forests and in turn uses the trees as a resource, began at Queen Elysia's behest. Nice. Lord Dump. No matter how abundant the woods and forests are here in Roland, they're not limitless. Her Majesty the Queen has a good head on her shoulders and a real knack for business. Ah, yes. Praise the Queen. Who's in here? Sup? Frieza. My husband works in the Malga mine to the north of here. He left here at the crack of dawn. Sometimes he doesn't even come home for days on end. Aw. I hope he doesn't get burned out from working so much. I'm always worrying about that. Well, he's, he's trying to provide, you know? Who are you? Anya. My daddy's job is digging holes. And he finds lots of pretty rocks inside. He says you're called Septi... Um... Very, you're very right, Anya. My daddy says his job is digging holes. He does indeed. Now, so your dad's a miner? That's amazing, you're a miner too. What's out here? Oh, <gasps> a man. Armand. Oh, that girl is so cute. I've got to be courageous and try to talk to her. Dude, I believe in you, Armand. You looking at Ellie over there? You got this. Alrighty. Cool beans all around. Let us... Did we ever exit the door up there? Have we been up there? I guess that's 
from this house. No, it's right out there. <gasps> Look at that. It's beautiful. They got low polygonal plants all over. My favorites. Now then, I'd actually like to head over to the bar. See if we can get some grub. Then again. So, there are several things around the game that we would like to collect. Most of them we can't get yet because we're missing certain pieces of equipment, like our recipe notebook, etc. But checking out the towns and the people here are important for getting things like ingredients that we need, buying certain items, particularly books and newspapers are essential. There are a couple of things that we need to worry about in the prologue as missable. Not too many, but for instance, there are shiny palm around the game, which spawn... I believe in this game it's like once per chapter you have a chance to slay a shiny palm and they give like massive XP if you can kill them. And there's an achievement for defeating like every type of shiny palm. So that's something we want to do. We also don't want to miss out on any of the liberal news issues or uh, the book collections or the treasure chests. But you don't have to worry your head about that because I got it all planned out. Who are you? Good morning, Claire. Good morning, Estelle and Joshua. Did the two of you really become bracers? What? How did you know? That's because working in the media is my future goal. I'm going to join the liberal news service and work hard as a reporter. Don't take my information lightly, either. Uh oh, uh, sure thing. My gut feeling says that the two of you are going to be in the tabloids. <laughs> well, thanks. Isn't it romantic that you two lovers are bracers who stand for justice? I have this feeling that a juicy drama is about to unfold. Uh, lovers? Joshua and I aren't lovers, we're family. You really don't understand anything, Estelle. Josh was adopted, and things could go either way in the future, right? Plus, leaving it at that would surely please the readers. <laughs> readers? Anyway, I'm looking forward to the both of you in more ways than one. <laughs> I feel like she's just an audience surrogate at this point. Just shipping what she should not ship. The two valiant bracers who had each other's backs and attempted to escape from the crisis. Ah, <sighs> love could definitely grow between them from that point. <laughs> this is so riveting. <laughs> All right, Claire, you got your head up in the clouds. Come on down. Stop by Auburn Bar. What's going on here? Simon, listen to me and listen well. Right now is the time for us to purchase lumber and septium. Ignoring the potential risks, I'm going to buy as much as I can with the budget. Alright, this might be the merchant from Bose. My aim is to capitalize on the Queen's birthday celebration. I believe the prices of these goods will rise before and after the festival. It would be best to stock up on these commodities while they're cheap and then put them onto the market later. Toot, supply and demand. Hey. Welcome! Oh, Estelle and Joshua? It's been a while, hasn't it, Alyssa? Is there something going on today? Could it be that you're on a date together? Yeah, right. We're actually on our way to bracer training now. Oh, is that all? Everyone from Sunday school seems to have decided on a career or goal and is working hard to achieve it. As expected, you're a bit different than everyone else, though. What? Is there something wrong with that? No, not at all. I just thought it was very like you to pick the unusual route, that's all. Oh, that's right. Tio decided that she was going to help out at her parents' farm. She even said for all of us to go up and visit her sometime. So that's what Tio decided on, huh? Okay, so Tio from Sunday School working at the farm. Another little useful nugget to store away for later. Don't you walk away from me, I'm not quite done. Everyone from Sunday School? Yep. Yeah. Good luck, Estelle. Thank you. Now we're behind the bar. What are we serving up today? Faulkner. I started working here because the owner said he'd let me manage the bar. After they started the morning and lunch service, however, I'd be more of a waiter than anything else. Oh well. So, you can see that it says wholesome pasta, 100 mira. So we could pay 100 mira to eat wholesome pasta. Sounds like a great deal, right? Eating a food will teach you its recipe. Somehow. Um, but we cannot do it yet because we don't have our recipe notebook. We'll be back for that. We can also buy some other uh, meals here. And these are to-go meals. So we could bring them bring them with us in the field of battle. You never know when you might need... French fries, flowery soda, and carmine eye. Who's in the kitchen? 
Denzel. Yo, still in Joshua. Aren't you a pair of early birds today? Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Denzel. In response to the request of my customers, I started offering breakfast. Today's special is wholesome pasta. It's superbly al dente. I'm so happy for you and your restaurant. Wholesome pasta. All right. Good to know. All right, talk to you. Oh, you're the assistant, aren't you? Uh, yes, uh, I've already made arrangements regarding the lumber. I'm looking into the septium right now. Dude, he has a lot of work to do. Excellent. Trent. I get so hungry working in the mines. <laughs> All right. Chomp, chomp, munch, munch. Gulp. You, you do you. It's riveting. Riveting all around. Alright, there was another little building by here. Another little quaint house. It's been a while since I've walked these, walked these halls and talked with these peeps. Oh, oh, unbelievable. My husband knocked over his bookshelves again. The room is now so dusty I can't go inside. Huh? Ret. Glory of the Kingdom. Compendium of Orbment Technology. Guide to the Roland Region. The Septian Church and the Bracer Guild. I wonder where that book I just bought the other day went. It looks like I'm gonna have to put these books in order. Ah, I see. You're a bit of a book collector, huh? Well, books are going to be very important for us as well. And what do we have here? The Joy of Cooking Monsters? Huh. Did I really buy this? <laughs> I guess you did, Rhett. Books are going to be an important collectible. And of course, we will be reading the books as well. For longer series, though. I'm going to wait until we have the whole collection and then read the whole thing. Because, you know, we want the whole thing back to back. So we can keep, keep track of the characters and the plot. Get it all in one video. That boy. Where could Luke have gone? He took off without a bite of breakfast. <gasps> where could Luke have gone? While well, Luke's out playing, talking about this secret place of his. Maybe that will become relevant later, but who can say, really? If we continue onwards, we can head out here to head out on the trail for adventure. This is the landing port for airships, I believe. And heading on down, we can actually enter the clock tower itself. Mr. Paddington! Hmm, now I know that voice from somewhere. Oh ho ho! Well, what have we got here? Cassius's naughty daughter and clever son, huh? Just when I thought you hadn't been around in a while, you show up all grown. Are you here every day, Mr. Paddington? Oh, this place has become somewhat of a new home for me. I intend to spend the remainder of my days guarding this clock. Aw, that's nice. A new home for him. There's a ladder that goes up to the observation deck. Uh, uh... What's wrong, Estelle? Something on your mind? Yeah, it's nothing, really. How about we climb up to the observation deck? Sure, I guess. That bit of hesitation. Very interesting. But, dudes. We got a prime view. We can see all of Roland. We can see a church over there and a hotel, and those are pretty much the last two places I want to stop by this episode. Alright. Let's start by the hotel. Hotel Roland. Hello. Vern. Welcome to Hotel Roland. Are you here to spend the night? Uh, Vern, it's us, don't you remember? Ah, uh, I know. I was just joking, Estelle. I was practicing my greeting just now. Uh, oh, really? Did you ever notice that Vern teases people with a straight face while being courteous at the same time? That's probably because he can. <laughs> you know, Estelle, if you pass your exam, you'll be the second female bracer here in Roland after Sherazard. Oh, and good luck to you too, Joshua. Cool. What's in the back? Linen room, employees only? I don't want to know what goes down in the linen room. What's going on in here, though? Who can say? It is an empty room. Are there any guests here at this time? I'm not sure if there is. 
Huh. Doesn't look like tourist season is upon us. That's alright, though. I think we uh, need a bit of adios in our life, so let's go to church. Roland Chapel. Who are you? Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. My, 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 if it isn't Estelle and Joshua. Good morning. Where are you off to this morning? It must be tough waking up so early. Hello. Father Divine. Oh, wow. It has been a while since I saw the both of you. I'm impressed to see you visiting this chapel so early in the morning. Good morning, Father Divine. <laughs> so we have Father Faith and Father Divine in the same town. Good morning. You were habitually late and played hooky more than a few times during your Sunday school day, Sestel. So have you changed your attitude on life since you graduated? <laughs> a bit, I guess. It looks like there is a little time before morning mass begins. So how about I give you both a special sermon? Uh, uh no thanks. Why am I getting thrown into the mix here? A little time. Sister May, it's almost time for Mass. Mylene is already here, so I'd best hurry along. So this is where we went to Sunday school with all our pals, grew up, learning the good ways of the church. This is one of those fantasy universes where the church is seemingly quite good. It is a force of good in the land. We can also visit the... Can we visit the mayor? We can visit the mayor! Hello! I'm so busy, busy, busy. Oh, this mansion is quite big. I've got the serving, cleaning, and washing to do. Mornings are so busy for a maid. I'm sure. No one's in the kitchen. Where are they? I need to have a word with the mayor. It's about the punk kids in town. Oh, good morning, Estelle and Joshua. Good morning, Mayor Claus. Good morning. I've been hearing great things about the both of you. So you're undergoing brazer training, are you? Having such youngsters sign up all by themselves to become brazers and protect everyone is inspiring. I expect great things of you. And we'll do our best. Ah, yes. Very good. Nice safe you got here. Mind if I take a closer look? I'm in the market for some mirror. Alright. Nice little place. It's his. He does have a wife, does he not? Oh, maybe she's out on the town. That, oh. A little bit of a messy attic up here. Might get that looked at. Maybe put the maid, maid on the task. Dude, this is a big property. Alright, I think with that, we've kind of walked around. We've checked out various homes, shops, the church, the hotel, the mayor. I feel like that's pretty who are you though uni oh Estelle and Joshua good morning uni aren't Luke and Pat with you today they were here just a minute ago the two of them suddenly took off and went somewhere huh Luke and Pat they are troublemakers indeed but we are pretty much done poking our nose around town for now it's been wonderful just getting to know the people, scaring the pigeons, climbing the clock tower. Ah, uh, indeed, all those memories. Now, the Bracer Guild stands before us. And with that Bracer Guild comes our first proper assignment. Next episode, we are going to learn about magic, we're going to learn about combat, we're going to learn about the Bracers, and we're going to prove ourselves. We are Junior Bracers in the making. So, tune in then. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your host, Carl, and this has been Trails to Completion.